quick overview of the chapter, what we are going to talk about. Okay. So the first one, generalized least squares GLS and uh, inference in the presence of autocorrelation. Then we have causes of autocorrelation. Uh, these are the main causes, then we'll go into detail. Then we also have consequences of autocorrelation, then the testing for autocorrelation, testing for autocorrelation. Okay. So now let's go into detail. Generalize this way. Generalize this way, GLS. If the reason for autocorrelation can be tracked back to model specification, then correct the specification. So there are many causes of uh, autocorrelation. So I'm saying here, if the reason for autocorrelation can be tracked back to model specification, then correct the specification, okay? Using the generalized list square, as we described below, will not be the correct solution, okay? If there is true autocorrelation present, then use a suitable form of estimated generalized least square capable of bringing back non-zero covariances to ideal zero form, okay? Then if autocorrelation of a given form is found present, it may be possible to transform the autocorrelated affected model into a form which doesn't violate the assumption of spherical disturbance. Okay. Sorry. Yes, go ahead and ask. Um, Thomas, if there is a autocorrelation can be traced there to model specification, then correct the uh, Are you saying that the, uh, the same model, the other space time, which is written for that uh, charge? Uh -huh. Can I hear you on the autocorrelation? How are we going to change to another? Uh, yes, model? look for a suitable model. Because maybe you have used this one, maybe there is X1 but you left out plus beta 2x2. <coughs> so go and specify and include what beta 2x2. Because all the values of, uh, or the variable x2, they are now included in what? In ut. But at the end in ut, you now have what? Autocorrelation there. So that's why I'm saying that go back to model specification, that your model is not specified correctly. Or maybe apart from depending on xt, it also depends on what xt minus one. So go and specify the model correctly. Okay. Now, for example, in the case of first order autocorrelation, assuming rho to be known, there exists an orthogonal k by k matrix, which we don't as p, such that the covariance of u. I was supposed to say u, u transpose is equals to p transpose by p, okay? And, and p is equals to, is that omega to the power half by e? Now oh, it's lambda, lambda to the power half by e, where lambda is a diagonal matrix of eigenvalues values of omega, the covariance matrix. And E is the matrix of non-normalized again values, again vectors. Transforming the data into Y star is equals to P by Y. And X star is equals to P by X. I'm sure I've done again values and again vectors. At least we have an idea about them. Okay. Don't worry, we're not going to details on this one. I'm just giving you so that you know. Okay. Then use an OLS estimate of parameter beta of the model Y star is equals to X star beta by VT. So we have actually transformed our model to include eigenvalues, eigenvectors in it. Okay. Which has the desirable property of being the best linear and biased estimator of beta where beta is the original model, is S in the original model, are we together? We still get the same estimates of beta, even if we use the eigenvalues, eigenvectors. 
Okay, so we've transformed it, but still get the same what values of uh, beta. Okay, as in the original model. In this case, the first order autocorrelation, it can be shown that P is given by that matrix there. Okay, now let's look at sources, causes or sources of uh, autocorrelation. Okay, so on the generalized list square, don't worry so much. You'll go into detail, so there is a course called generalized list square, a full course on generalized list squares. Okay, that's where you go into detail now. Here I'm just giving so that you know that there is something called generalized list square, which you can use to transform a model if there is presence of autocorrelation. You can transform a model, then we make use of that to model. Instead of using ONS, we use generalized list squares. Are we together? Okay. Now, what you need to know is the causes and sources of autocorrelation. This one, you need to know it. Okay. In practice, the assumption of independence or no autocorrelation can be violated, i.e. may not hold for a number of reasons, for a number of reasons. So these are some of the sources or causes of autocorrelations. Number one. Omission of relevant explanatory variables. Omission of relevant explanation, explanatory variables. Okay. Like what the question that he asked, and I demonstrated by making use of this example here. So most economic variables, such as cyclic variables, tend to be autocorrelated. If autocorrelation, autocorrelated explanatory variables are omitted, or excluded from the regression model, then they are absorbed in the error term, UT, which will then be also autocorrelated. For example, suppose the model YT is equal to beta naught plus beta one, X one T plus beta two, X two T plus the error term, UT, is wrongly specified as yt is equals to beta naught plus beta one, remove that plus there, plus beta one x one t plus ut, okay? Are we together? We have to remove that plus between beta one and x one t. So it becomes beta one x one t, okay? Then if x two t is serially correlated, so will ut. Okay, because we have omitted one variable there, that means if X2T is serially correlated, it will cause U, UT to be also serially correlated, which will end up with what? Correlation of that being not equal to zero. Huh? Four? Fourteen. Oh. Are we together? Students, mm -hmm. you figure? Uh -huh. I'm saying that because we have excluded X2T, which is supposed to be included, then the, the effect of X2T will be compounded in what? In, in the error term, the UT. Are we together? Then UT will end up being what? Serially correlated or autocorrelated because of the omission of relevant explanatory variable. Okay, is it clear? Uh, I'm, I'm trying to simplify and make things clear. Am I trying? <laughs> okay. Autocorrelation due to misspecification by exclusion of important explanatory variable or by assuming a linear relationship. When in fact, a nonlinear relationship exists is quite common. Sometimes we say that there is a linear relationship when in fact there is a what non-linear relationship all together or can you omit a variable all these are causes or sources of what autocorrelation other treatments of the problem are also possible as we will see later so that's the first uh, source of autocorrelation what is it called let's say together 
wonderful. Number two, this is a quite common question which uh, examiners oh. who is not there? I think all are there now. Okay. I said this is a quite common problem which examiners like. Okay. Sources or causes of autocorrelation. Number two. Number two. Prolonged shock effects. Prolonged shock effects. It's another source or a cause of autocorrelation. Prolonged shock effects. Prolonged shock effects. System shocks and serious natural or social economic events such as strikes, accidents can often be felt over fairly long periods of time. This may be in both the explanatory and dependent variable. Consequently, the problem may or may not be easy to eliminate. The problem may or may not be easy to eliminate. Appropriate specification or estimation and inference procedures that take into account such correlation are recommended. Okay. Is it clear? For example, a lady, sorry to use this example, who has been raped, it affects even in her marriage when she's married later on, it affects her. Whether you like it or not, it will affect her in the marriage. So the husband will be asking, ah, what's the problem? What is the problem? The problem is what happened before. Okay, this, these are what? Shock effects or something that has happened before. Oh, some of you can actually laugh. <laughs> okay. Now, another example, whoa. Whoa, accidents. If there is an accident that has happened, it can actually, sometimes the accident will permanently damage your leg or your hands, so that, or your hands, so that you cannot drive anymore. So those effects will keep on coming as time goes on. But you can not even go to school properly like other children. Are we together? Those are prolonged shock effects. Some that has happened now, it affects you maybe for the rest of your life. Okay. Or even getting a wrong boyfriend <laughs> can affect you for the rest of your life. <laughs> okay, so prolonged shock effects. So number one is what? Source of autocorrelation. Number one is what? Omission of? Number two? Okay, number three, extrapolation tendencies. Extrapolation tendencies. Okay. Traditions and other various forms of behavioral patterns established in the past will often affect current economies. For example, when the dependent variable depends on its past history and this dependence is not part of specification, then autocorrelation is bound to be present. This is often an inherent or a deeply rooted problem that may not be easy to eliminate. Appropriate estimation and inference procedures in the presence of such correlation may be the only solution. Okay, I think this one is straightforward. <laughs> One example. I said traditions and other forms of what behavioral patterns established in the past will often affect what current economies. Okay. What the way we used to do things before will affect the way things will be done in the future. Even though in the future we have changed things, it will still affect. Are we together? Uh -huh. like, like right now, 
we, the old ones here at the University of Zimbabwe, we are used to do things in a certain way. We are used to do things in a semester. But now things have shifted towards to modular and the block system. So sometimes to adjust now, it's affecting the students now. Because we are failing to, to adapt to the current things that are happening now. Uh -huh. Even for us, we, we are used to teach for two hours a week, then two hours tutorial in a week, we are done. But now we are teaching what? Four hours continuously, which we are not used to. So it's affecting now the way we are teaching. Though we have to change. Okay. So extrapolation tendencies, it affects. Okay. Even an example, our economy. I will not go there. <laughs> the, the challenge is that if I try and use Zimbabwe examples, some people will quote it and post it somewhere else and say, our lecturer was saying this and that and that, which is not what I meant. I'm trying just to, in fact, that's why I'm using different examples, which are different from the economy. Because sometimes it becomes what political, which I don't mean to be political. I'm just imparting knowledge. That's why we'll use examples of girls, boys, and so forth. But translate it to what? To the economy of Zimbabwe. Uh, you said? Oh, the fact that I said nothing, it becomes political. <laughs> I've not heard of this one before. <laughs> I'm trying to avoid that one. <laughs> it's all right. So it's possible, but you understand it now. I don't mind. Okay, go ahead. It's not me. <laughs> go ahead. But don't make it political. Okay, you understand it. You see, oh, all right, all right, all right. I'm sure those who get it, they, they manage to get it. But let me move on to number four. So, what is number one? What is number one? Number two, number three, number four is data treatment, data treatment, that's number four, data treatment. Data manipulation such as data smoothing tend to spread impacts over several periods. Sampling procedures such as systematic sampling can also generate serial correlation, okay, data manipulation. Like right now, we had census. Oro, I can give you an example of inflation. Okay? Sometimes the data is not exactly as it was corrected. Do you get it? There is some form of manipulation that is done to suit what certain people want. Do you get it? That's data manipulation. Okay? After manipulating it, it has a long effect. Instead of letting it run naturally as it's supposed to, that is manipulating, manipulated before it's what? published, okay? So data manipulation has a what? Effect on the autocorrelation. I hope you understand. This one's quite straightforward. Let me move, move on. So number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Okay, many of the points raised above refer to time series data. Cross-sectional or spatial data can also contain autocorrelation altogether, cross-sectional data instead of time series data. It can also contain what? Autocorrelation. Subsets of an economic system may affect another through their leakages and conducts. If a shock hits one 
or a more strategic parts of the system, then all the other units to which it is linked will also be affected. Okay. If one system is affected, then another system is also what affected because one system is what being affected. Are we together? Uh -huh. So I think this one is, is this straightforward? For example, example. Okay. Who wants to give me an example? Whereby one section of the economy is affecting the other economy because this one has been affected. Hey, you have examples. Wow. Okay, say your example. Now, I gave the first example of power project. Does it show your question? What? Power project in Zimbabwe. Yes, go ahead. Uh -huh. Maintain when there is not enough power, you can't expand it to certain kind of mind if you require All right. That's a good example. Clap for him. Yes, my friends. You want to give an example as well? Go ahead. Yes, you. Are you raising your hand now? You are looking. The price of. Uh huh. Yes, it's a good example. Listen, year, six two months ago, when there was war in Ukraine, you get it. The price of fuel shot up, and those some of you don't even go for shopping or you don't buy things. Those who normally go for shopping, you know that the price shot up. You get it. So because of the increase in price of fuel, it affected everything else at a subsection. Do you get it? Uh -huh. So one subsection of the affects also the other. That's uh, economic what? Okay. Yellow. Okay. So those are the five Yellow causes or causes of what? Or of uh, autocorrelation. So what is number one? Number two? Number three, number four, and number five. After saying this a number of times and it comes in the exam and you fail it, what, what should I do to you? Tell me, my brother, tell me, what should I do to that person? Give bonus marks. Huh? Give bonus marks. Ah, you. <laughs> If, if a question like this comes in the exam and you fail to answer this question, what should I do? Huh? What should I do? We have done it five times. All right. <laughs> now, apart from causes and sources of autocorrelation, we can also move on to what? Consequences. What are the consequences now? of autocorrelation, okay? So, the consequences are as follows. A summary of the sampling procedures, properties of ordinary squares obtained in the presence of autocorrelation is, now we want to estimate using ordinary square, but in the presence of what? Autocorrelation, let's say there's autocorrelation. And we want to use what? OLS to estimate it. These are some of the properties. Number one, our beta head is still the same as the beta head that we used to have for just ordinary square when there is no autocorrelation. Are we together? What is this figure? Which is given by beta head is equal to x transpose x uh, inverse by x transpose y. Okay. Which is equal to beta plus x transpose x inverse x by the error term u. Okay, so now that's the estimate of what? Of uh, beta head. Now, what is the expected value of that? What's the expected value? 
So if you get the expected value of that number one, beta still remains as beta. Understand? Then the expected value of x transpose x inverse x, we take it just like a constant, we take it outside the expected value. And we remove the expected value of what? U, the error term. It was the expected value of U, zero. And this one. So what do you remain with? Expected value of beta here is equal to beta. So that means the expected value of the uh, of beta head in the presence of auto collision is still what beta. Do you get it? And what is this property? It's called what unbiased. And this one. Next, the covariance of beta head is equal to x transpose x inverse x transpose by the covariance omega that omega there by x inverse by x transpose x inverse we can actually derive this it can actually be derived but for purpose of this course i will not go into detail of deriving that but we can actually derive if i was enthusiastic or of as i would say derive this okay but what i want i want you to do is to just understand this and know how to apply it do you get it because economics is more of applied course okay but if it was a course like glm or generalized this way or general linear models i would say derive this it was, uh -huh. but for purpose of this course just know that the covariance is given by that formula Okay, when it comes to generalized least squares or general linear models, then you say derive. Okay, so the covariance is given by that. It's different from the covariance that we normally know. Just of ordinary least square. Okay, now, having obtained expected value of beta head and also the covariance of beta head, we can also show that beta head is normally distributed and its variance is given by beta, and this covariance is given by the covariance that we've obtained there. So those are the properties. So thus, although the ordinary square beta head is still unbiased for beta, the conventional formula for the para, parameter covariance sigma squared x transpose x inverse, which we know, okay, from ordinary square, which is given by that sigma squared x transpose x inverse, or its sample counterpart s squared x transpose x inverse no longer measures the sampling variance for the ordinary square beta head. Thus, any application of it is pot potentially misleading because the two are different now. Can you see it? The one for ordinary square and the one for the uh, the one we obtained when there is presence of correlation. They are different. So when you use the one, the sigma squared x transpose x inverse, it's misleading. Are we together? It is also clear that beta head has now larger standard errors. The minimum variance property of OLS no longer holds. Okay. So let's move on to the undesirable consequences. Just explaining them now instead of using the formulas. Okay. We can now summarize the undesirable consequences of photocorrelation as follows. Number one, it results in inefficient parameter estimation. Okay? So a potential question, what are the undesirable consequences of autocorrelation? So number one, it results in inefficient parameter estimation. More specifically, model coefficients will have inflated variance or standard errors. Okay, error variance is un underestimated by ordinary space. The estimated model has low forecasting power. So those are the undesirable properties of what? Autocorrelation. Yes, go ahead and ask. No, just write this. It suffices. Okay. All right. You enjoy speaking and asking in Shona. Why? Yet you have complained that lecturers should teach in or lecture in English. 
But when you're asking questions, you're asking either Devele or Shona. Try and speak in English so that everybody can understand when you're asking questions. I, I know that when I say that, then some people will never ask. <laughs> All right, let's flow, let's flow, let's flow. But I'll be speaking in English. But if you don't understand, just lift your hand and say, say, please repeat. If you're in Devere or from other countries, then just say, say, I don't understand here. I, I, I mean it, I mean it. Just lift your hand and say, I didn't understand this one. Please explain. I'll take it again. Okay? But when it comes to asking, yes, is there a question? Uh, you agree? <laughs> Note on consequences of autocorrelation. Although there are other consequences of autocorrelation, they are apparently these are apparently the ones that, in general, have more serious impact on estimation, hypothesis testing, and forecasting. Okay, so if I say, give me the undesirable two undesirable properties of uh, consequences of autocorrelation. You can easily answer that question. Is that so? Can I move on? It is clear from the foregoing, from the foregoing that in econometric modeling, there should be routine checks or tests for autocorrelation. Instead of just saying with the word of mouth, we should actually what test it. Are we together? Why, why do mathematicians or statisticians like to say, are we together? Are we together? Always. I'm still wondering. I just find myself saying, are we together? <laughs> I don't know why. But your teachers in mathematics, did they used to say that? Yeah. Are we together? Uh -huh. Now let's move on. Let's move on. Autocorrelation can, of course, take various forms. It is, however, customary in empirical work and in the in literature to concentrate on first order autocorrelation, as many empirical studies have shown that first order autocorrelation is apparently the most common form of autocorrelation found in many economic variables. First order autocorrelation. My friends, you have forgotten. First order autocorrelation. Yes. She, she's doing a good work. Please get it for her. Yeah. You know, some people are doing disadvantage. <laughs> yeah. Some people are being disadvantaged. So if she continues checking it. Uh -huh. okay. Now, first order autocorrelation. If you still remember, if you still remember, we had an AR1 model from time series. What is AR1 model? We say what YT is equal to. We can put a constant, or we can say find what plus phi one. Uh -huh. Y T minus one plus white noise AT. And this one. That's in AR1 model. Sometimes we say the constant is zero. So we put zero there. So that will remain the YT is equal to phi one, yt minus one plus a t. That's in AR1 model, if you still remember. Are we together? I don't know why I say that. So now, instead of yt, we now have ut, because we are concerned with what the error terms there on our model. So our ut, our model is what? yt is equal to, no, ut, okay. I'll say yt is also beta naught plus beta one x one t plus ut. So when it comes to autocorrelation, we are considering the uts that they should be what independent. That's the assumption. Now, when they are not independent, 
we say there is what autocorrelation from our model that's all now we are saying now ut can take maybe it can be first order second order third order and so forth so i mentioned that normally it's just first order that's what we are concerned with but we can move on to second order third order and so forth but we have to look at the first order the impact of the first order first that's what has more influence or impact on our model than the rest okay so now using this now ar1 model ar1 model auto regressive of order one what do we do now is equal to phi one ut minus one plus another error term 80. okay and phi one it can be shown that it's just the same as rho so what do we do we say it's equal to rho u t minus one plus <coughs> epsilon t that's our ar1 if i tried is it clear okay so now let me let me read the first definition the first order autocorrelation a series ut is said to have first order autocorrelation if it satisfies the first order autoregressive ar1 model ut is equal to rho ut minus one plus error term epsilon t okay is it clear now where it's coming from is it clear where it's coming from now properties of auto regressive process ar1 number one the autocorrelation function acf of an ar1 decays exponentially if rho is between what zero and one the acf you see remember we had pacf and acf now i'm saying that the acf what decays exponentially what does it mean? If you plot the ACF, we have the values with the legs. <coughs> it's decaying what? Exponential. That's the ACF. And that's the legs. You still remember? So I'm saying that it decays exponential if rho is what? Between what? It's less than or equal to rho less than rho one. Shoot us. Then, if or in a damped sine wave, if rho lies between what minus one and zero, it should be. Okay, thank you. Now, if we are now considering from minus one up to zero, then it has a what? A damped cosine wave. What does it mean a damped cosine wave? So we have values like this. Then. Then. And it's continuous like that. So that you can see that is damping off. Damped cosine waves. That is, if we have minus one is less than zero, is less than zero. Damped cosine waves. And we have a CF here. That's the ACF. Now, we are also concerned about the PACF. PACF cuts off, i.e. becomes zero after leg one. 
cuts off, becomes a rapture like one. Despite this, PACF. Cuts off after leg one. So if this is our leg one, we we'll have a spike there. Then the rest becomes self. That's the PAC, PACF. You can do all, either to the positive side or to the negative side, it doesn't matter. So that's what it means, cuts off after leg one. The rest becomes negligible. Cuts off after leg one. I'm sure I've done it in time series. Cutting off, telling off. Okay. Can you move on? Testing for autocorrelation. Testing for autocorrelation. I think you can erase this now. Testing for autocorrelation. Testing for autocorrelation. This, you have learned it in time series. This simple one. Whereby we examine the ACF. Okay? We examine the ACF of the residuals against the leg. If there is no autocorrelation, then the ACF coefficient should lie within what? 95% confidence band. Okay. We say that if this white noise, AT, follows normal, means zero and values, one. And this one. Confidence interval now, we say our estimates of this, which is zero, plus or minus, Z alpha over two. Two to okay. Then we say what? <coughs> Sigma get AT over, square root of n. And is all. Now, zero, we can leave it out. We end up with what? Plus or minus z of over two. If it's 95%, what is it? 1.96. Then sigma at is what? One. And is all. Over square root of n. It's not the same. That's where it's coming from. This is the confidence interval which is coming from. Then we substitute z of over two, which is 1.96. Sigma, sigma head a t, which is one. So put one there by one. Then switch of n remains. Here we are talking about the ACF, okay? So now if our ACF, we have this value here. Let's put both there. Let's put that closer. Then we have leg here. We have a seal. All together. If all the values of the ACF lie within this band here, then we say that there is no autocorrelation. Are we together? If one of the values lies outside this band, then at that point, there is autocorrelation. So we can put values in. Okay. All of them, they are lying within what? That depends. Or a 95% confidence interval. Then we are saying that there is no autocorrelation. If one of the values lie outside, immediately say that there is what? Autocorrelation. How do get it? Is it clear? Just a recap of what you did in time series. And most of you passed very well. <coughs> the 
the advantage of this graphical test is that it applies not only to first order autocorrelation, but to all forms of what autocorrelation. Because when it comes to first order autocorrelation, you're just dealing with what leg one. Okay? But we have leg two, leg three, leg four, and so forth. <clears throat> Now, another test, another test, test for autocorrelation using what is called Dubin Watson test. Dubin Watson tests. Dubin Watson tests. These things you should have done them in what? In the regression. All these things you should have done them in the regression. Okay, so Dubin Watson tests. The Dubin Watson test for autocorrelation has the following steps. The hypothesis that is H naught rho is equal to zero versus H1 rho is not equal to zero. Rho from our equation, they can you rest? From our equation, ut is equal to rho, ut minus one plus epsilon t. Oh, rho. We can use the tests whereby we say H naught mu t is equal to two versus H1 mu t is not equal to two. So we have our equation u t is equal to rho u t minus one plus epsilon t. That's our equation. So we are saying that if there is no autocorrelation, what does it mean? Rho is equal to? Rho is equal to? Zero then that means this one goes out. That means ut is just equal to the error term. Okay, is it clear? Is it clear? Okay. Now we can also use what you call mu d is equal to two versus h1 mu d is not equal to two. Where mu d is equal to expected value of d and the test statistic d is given by our D is given by D is equal to summation from T is equal to 12 to N, U T, U at T minus U hat T minus one squared over summation of from T is equal to one up to N, U T hat squared. Where, 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 it is easy to show for large n that d is approximately equal to two by one minus rho head. So we are saying that d is equal to two times one minus rho head. Or the same as what rho head, what is rho head? One minus d over two. Where rho head is equal to one minus. What is rho head? Is equal to one minus summation. I'm asking you to give me the answer that is there. Ut, ut minus one. And this one. Over what? Oh, there is a squared there. Where is it coming from? Is it an error? It should be an error. Okay. Divided by summation of what? Ut squared. Yes. Like, um, isn't the summation of the is it's like a substitution of the V that we got in the method? Substitute this one. Substitution of which one? Of this D here. Okay. 
Let me see. Which one is correct? Which one is correct? I'm asking you. If if you try and expand that one, do we end up with this? What are we expanding? We are saying G is equal to summation U T hex minus U T minus one yes. squared divided by summation of what? U T squared. Yes. If you expand that, if you expand that, do you end up with this? Where is the square? Can you summation of Okay. Don't worry. We'll come back to this. Okay. Just remind me. But this one is correct. This one we need to simplify that so that we get something that is close to this. Okay. We'll simplify it. Just remind me. But for now, we just want to progress. Then we'll come back to see which one is which one is the correct formula. Okay. Sit down. Sir. Now, let's move on. Let's move on. Just remind me of this one so that I give it the correct formula. It's correct. Someone saying it's correct. Okay, but I'll give you the correct formula. Now, the decision rule is if the value of D is less or equal to two, then using an appropriate significance level, number one, reject H naught in favor of H1, i.e. in favor of positive correlation, if D is less than D lower. Okay, so DL is set for D lower. We have two uh, limits or critical values, the lower one and the upper one, the critical values from tables are together. So DL stands for the lower value of the critical value. DU stands for the upper value of the critical value. Are we together? Okay. So reject H0 in favor of H1, i.e. in favor of the positive correlation if D lower, D is less than D lower. You don't have to write this. Number two, reject H0 in favor of H1, i.e. in favor of negative correlation, if D is greater than four minus D upper, okay? Then next, accept H0 if D upper lies, if D lies between what? D upper and four minus D upper, i.e. there is no autocorrelation. Then number four, it should be number four, if D lies between D lower and D upper, or D four minus D upper, D lies between four minus D upper and four minus D lower, the test is considered inconclusive. The critical values D, L and D upper are given in the Dubin Watson tables, are given in special tables, Dubin Watson tables. So now you can see that after explaining all this, are you not confused? Are you not confused? Yes. But now, I prefer using a table then, that table or a graph, which states all these things. Are we together? That one will become very simple. That's why I say don't write for now. Okay. So let me go to, I think, uh, the module. So module. We'll cross check the formula first. Row head. And this one slightly different from that one. 
So we are given the proposition and there's a row here. It's just this part here. And this one. And also we let ut squared be equal to, approximately equal to, from t is equal to one. Can you see this? It's starting from t is equal to one up to n, ut head squared is approximately equal to, from t is equal to two up to n for ut squared. It's also approximately equal to, t is equal to two up to n, ut minus one head squared. All together. We are assuming that all these are approximately equal. Okay, then we write t is equal to that, which is given by that. So now, our formula, I think it should be just this part here without one minus. And it should just be this part. But for those of you who can quickly calculate, can you show that? But it's, it's difficult because uh, we are concerned with one minus g over this. <laughs> Uh, so uh, uh, so I think the So I think the is supposed to be the same. So I think the is the same. the I, I think this one should be correct. That one should be correct. Okay, this one is correct. Okay. If one minus Which one? That one is correct. This one? Yes. So that one is correct. Yes. So one is correct. Yes. You know, one minus. No, it's okay. What we are interested in is this is correct. If this is correct, that's all. I want to show you, I want to ask you for you to decide. Yeah? T? Yeah, it appears one minus. Thomas is supposed to this. You agree now? Okay. So now, you know that row h is just the correlation. This is the graph I was talking about. So immediately you have a question about W once on tests. You can easily have this graph. First of all, put your zero, are we together? Then put D, DL, okay? Then put D upper, okay? From D upper, in the, in the middle, you put a two. Then from two, we say four minus D upper because D upper is the largest. So the next one will be what? Four minus D upper. Then the next one is what? Four minus D lower since D lower is smaller. Are we together? Then the last one will be four. So we have zero, four, uh, D lower, D upper, two, four minus D upper, uh, four minus D lower, then four. So the region between zero and D lower the region between zero and D lower is what? We are accepting H1. We are saying that H1 rho is what? Positive. Rho is greater than zero. Then the next one, D lower and D upper, the test is inconclusive. What is this again? Then the next one, D upper and four minus D upper, rho is equal to zero. Okay? Next one, four minus D upper and four minus D lower. The test is inconclusive. Then D lower, four minus D lower up to four. We have what rho is less than zero, which is rho is negative. So if you get your D, just put it where it belongs and make a conclusion. So if our D is somewhere here, is somewhere here, what does it mean? What about if it's somewhere here? If it's somewhere here, say it with confidence. <laughs> rho is less than, which means rho is what? Negative. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So now we have this data set here. Consider the following data, expenditure data presented in unit two, that is income and expenditure. Using the fitted model or regression, y is equals to 1.64 plus 0.24x, compute the residual series, okay? Hence, tests for first order serial correlation. Use five percent level significance. Now, how do you compute residuals? The UT is now. You have the model already. So, how do you compute residuals? Yes. Yes. You compute the fitted values. Then you say what? Y minus Y hat. Simple. Understand? Then after that, what do you do? Now. Test for the first order serial correlation. First order serial correlation. How do we test now? We now use D. And what is D? We say D is equal to one minus what? What was the value of D? What was the formula for D? Is it raw H over two? Is that correct? Or is that the way? What is D? You guys. What is D? It's the middle. It's the opposite. D is equal to what? Two. By what? One minus raw head. And what is raw head? Okay, so you can find raw head, substitute there, you get your D. Yes. If N is large, yes. But here our N is small. So you want us to use the form first formula. Yeah, she's right. I said use this formula when N is large. That's when we have those approximations. Okay, but here our N is small. So what do we do? We'll go back to the first formula. Here. This one here. But I'm just wondering, this formula, is it not wrong? This one here, because just looking at it, I just see it as wrong. Huh? Is she? Uh, All right, so this one here, as she pointed out, as she pointed out, we use it for large n. When n is large. When n is small, we use d is equal to, we use that one now, summation of what? Ut hat minus ut minus one hat squared. All of what? Summation of what? Ut hat squared. That's what we use for small n. Huh? Normally we talk about 30. Less than 30 small, greater than 30 slash. But our data set is very small. Okay, so we use this formula here. Okay, can we move on? 
So now, from this example, I can show you the answers there. So we now have UT there. Are we together? From what he explained, what's your name? God knows. From what God knows explained, you will get UT head. Citrus. Then UT minus one, the first value will be missing. Okay. And then the next one will be what? This value will come here and go down up to the last. Okay. From here, you can now find your T now. Okay. Is it clear? And the value of this was 2.51. 2.51. Can you erase this? So 2.51, and we have D lower from tables. D lower is equal to 0 0.6, and D upper is 1.4, okay, from tables. Normally, I would give you the D lower and D upper, normally, in the exam setup. I would say D lower is this, D upper is this, okay? Then, but what you have to do now is to go back to your, this graph here. Okay, then you put your zero. Then the next one is what? D lower. D lower is 0 0.6. 0 .6. Then next value, D upper. What was D upper? One point. One point. I mentioned D upper. It's 1.4. Yes, 1.4. 1.4. The next is 2. Next, what's the next value? 4 minus D upper. What is 4 minus uh, 1.4? Huh? 2.6. I'm hearing a lot of noise. It makes me uncomfortable. Whether am I doing something wrong or what? 2.6. Next value is what? 4 minus D lower. 4 minus 0 0.6. 3 points. Next. 4. Okay. So we can level. Pro is equal to 0. Row less than zero. Row is less than zero. Then here inconclusive, inconclusive. Okay. So what's the value that you obtained? Two point two point five one. Where is it? Somewhere here. Two point five one. So what does it mean? Row is equal to is it not straightforward? Is it better? Yes. I think. End of chapter three. Now, let's look. Admit. <laughs> Okay. Now, 
let's share screen again. Let me see whether, can you see? A1, state the assumptions violated when the following problems okay. We have done the first one. What assumptions is being violated? Independence of what? Of the error terms. Then two marks. Then A2, A2, you have the, that data set and uh, fit the relation model. Can't you do that? Can't you do that? Then find R squared. R squared is what? SSR over SST by 100. Can't you do that? So those five marks is a bonus. Next. Describe the critical region for the Darwin Watson test. That the graph that I showed you, this one here. You know, say. L, D upper, you know, say. four minus D upper, four minus D lower, then four. Then put all this. Then you get how many marks? Then test for autocorrelation using Darwin Watson tests at alpha is equal to 0 0.05 level of significance. With D lower is equal to that, D upper is equal to that. Can't you do that? So how many marks? 10 marks, section A. Plus two, 12 marks. Are these not bonus marks? Are these not bonus marks? One end is really complicated here. I'm asking you a question. Answer me at least. A bunch of complicated, huh? okay. So now, what I want you to do, just left. I'll give you this. It's a past exam paper. I'll give you this past exam paper. I want you to answer question A2. That's the next assignment. Question A2. Due date tomorrow. Uh, Why were you quick to say shh? <laughs> all right, all right. S since you want a test. Bring it tomorrow. Question A2. Question A2, bring it tomorrow. Remember to bring first assignment today. Then this assignment to tomorrow. No, don't put on a sheet. No. No. Today submit assignment one. Tomorrow submit assignment two. And because these assignments they are very simple, I won't hesitate to give you a zero. Because I want to run my hundreds, 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 hundreds. So I won't hesitate to give you a zero if you don't submit on time, okay?
I won't hesitate. I will say we will cover up on the other side. Uh -huh. So that others can get, 100 others can get what, 50 and below. Okay. Now, I, I think I should move on to the next, but now I think you should just take a small break, unless if you want me to continue. I should continue. Yeah? Because continuing is just an hour, then I'll be done. What do you think? I should stop because it's around nine. around nine is just one hour. Mm. So I should continue. Mm. Uh, so like this trying to feed, uh, it will take another 30 minutes. Uh? Uh, let's just take an hour then people will just go. I'll finish by 11, I'll be done. Then you can go. Okay. All right. Okay, so I'm continuing. But any questions on auto correlation? No questions. So let's move on to the next. If you want to move out, I don't want any disturbance during the lecture. Someone moving from the back trying to move out. So if you want to move out, move out, but don't come back. You will sit to be replaced by those sitting outside. You just take your notebook, move out, also Karapanze. Then those who are outside can come and take occupy your where you are seated. Is it okay? Correcting for auto correlation. No, we are not going to cover that one. Uh, it's just testing, then we end up there. Uh, correcting that one, you read on your own and finish off. Okay. Is it fair? Uh -huh. What is here? Okay, can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? All right, those on Zoom, can you see my, it's supposed to be lecture four. Those on Zoom, can you see lecture four? The slide there. The problem is that I can't yes. hear them. Yes, you are seeing. Oh, wonderful. At least Marcus is this, this range. Okay, so I'll continue. Thank you, Marcus. I All see. right. Lecture four. Lecture four. Now, to be truthful, I have problem pronouncing this word. So don't laugh at me. <laughs> <laughs> when I don't pronounce it properly. Okay? Anyone wants to help me?
Anyone who wants to help me? Heterosedasticity. I've tried. Play for me. All right. So this one, we are now moving on. We say our error terms, UT, they are N, I, D, which means the variance sigma squared. In other words, we are saying that the variance is what? Constant or homogeneous. So, when we are talking about heterosedasticity, we are talking about hetero means what? Different. All together. Sedastic means what? Variance. So we are talking about what? Different variance. But here there are something that what, is supposed to have what? A homogeneous variance or a constant variance. The error terms. So when this assumption is violated, we end up with what? A heterosedastic variance. Okay. Is it clear? So that this topic is all about heterosedastic, whereby we have different variants. Okay, so now let's move on and see what the chapter has for us. So these are just the uh, overview of the chapter. Let's move straight away to heterosedastic. The main goal or objective of econometric modeling is to obtain accurate and efficient estimates of relationships among variables of an economic system on the basis of which the main aims of econometrics, namely prediction, planning, and control can be effected. Yes, go ahead, Sivanda. Menges is Sivanda. But I can't hear you. Someone is raising her hand up. But I can't hear them. I don't know where the challenge is. So I think you should just type in here. I'll address the question. Maybe they are calling now. Hello? Hi. Fine. You can't see the screen. All right, let me close it and open it. They can't see the screen, so I'm going to close it and open it. Stop. Then I'll share again. I see. I missed the joy. Raise your hand if you can see the screen now. You I can see the screen. Well. Oh, wonderful. But why didn't you say so you are here? <laughs> Some people. I should beat him. <laughs> it takes someone who is in South Africa to raise his hand and say we can't see the screen. But someone who is just some few meters away. <laughs> All right, now I'll move on. The degree of success or of failure in achieving these goals depends to a large extent on the degree of success achieved on the specification, estimation, and diagnostic stages of the model building process. At the estimation and inferential stages, efficient, efficiency of parameter estimates and validity of inference resulting therefrom depend largely on whether or not the fundamental assumptions of the GLM are satisfied. And I'm saying here for this case, we are talking about the variance, which you said that is supposed to be constant. But now it's not, if it's not constant, we end up with what? Heterosedastic altogether, which is different variance. So we are talking about heterosedastic, okay. <laughs> Mm 
Now, again, in econometric regression, y is equal to x transpose beta plus the other term ut. Okay, this is just explaining the regression model. One of the basic assumptions is that the seventh term or error term are homosegastic, i.e. sigma squared t is equal to variance of ut, which is equal to sigma squared. Is it clear? If I'm too fast, say so. Is constant for all t, or equivalently, the omega, which is equal to expected value of u, u transpose is equal to sigma squared by the identity matrix i where u is equal to u1, u2, up to un transpose. This assumption, among other things, that the least square estimate of beta hat, which is equal to x transpose x inverse by x transpose, there should be x transpose there, y, is an efficient estimate of beta, and the conventional t-test and f-test used to make inference about the model are valid statistical procedures. If the error terms in the regression model have an equal variance, we say that there is heterocedasticity. Okay. Definition of what? Heterocedasticity. Let ut be a time series. Then the series is said to be heterocedastic if sigma squared t is not equal to sigma squared s for some t not equal to s that is the variances are what different are not equal okay heterocedasticity refers to a situation where the variances of the error terms ut are unequal i think we have said this over and over if it doesn't click in your head i think there must be something what Something what? Since this is an undesirable phenomenon, the GLM assumptions referring to the absence of this phenomenon is called the assumption of homogeneous variances, i.e. unequal, <coughs> i.e. equal variances. Homogeneous variance assumption. <coughs> Whenever there is heterocedasticity in the error terms, all inference, namely estimation, hypothesis testing, and forecasting, must take into account the effects of heterocedasticity. Okay, for the con conclusion to be valid. Now let's examine some of the common causes of what heterocedasticity causes and sources. The assumption of spherical disturbance, as indicated earlier, involves the double assumption that the error terms have an equal variance, have equal variance, and the error terms are uncorrelated. Okay. It is possible, of course, for this error series to be uncorrelated, but with an equal variance. Now combine the autocorrelation homogeneous variance together and we are saying here that it is possible for the error series to be what uncorrelated that is there is no autocorrelation but at the same time there is what an equal variance in this case the covariance matrix for the error terms will be diagonal heterocedasticity can be caused by a number of factors these include like what we have done with the autocorrelation we are now looking at what? Heterocedasticity now. So what are some of the causes and uh, sources? Number one is what? Misspecification. Okay. Misspecification is the same as what? Omission of what? Relevant. The model is not specified correctly. Okay. We didn't specify the model correctly. Okay. Some economic variables such as consumer price index, CPI, or GDP tend to increase linearly or exponentially. If such variables are omitted from the regression, they will be absorbed in the error term, which will then exhibit changing 
variance. For example, if a model of the form yt is equal to beta naught plus beta one x one t plus beta two x two t plus the error term ut is wrongly specified as yt is equal to beta naught plus beta one x one t plus the error term vt. What have you done here? We have excluded what x two t. Are we together? If x two t is increasing with time, so will vt. So the effects of x two t are now absorbed in what in the error term v two t. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Heterosexism due to misspecification by exclusion of important exponential variables or by assuming a linear relationship when in fact a nonlinear relationship exists, it is quite common. The solution to the problem is, if detected, is simply correcting the specification. Other treatments for the problem are also, pro are also possible, as we will see later. Okay, so you can see that number one, misspecification is the same as what? Omission of what? Relevant explanatory variables. Okay, but yet I'm going to what? Misspecification. Okay, so that's number one. Number one is what? Number two, stratification. Stratification. Different economic units or population are hardly homogeneous. Okay, data for two different groups of population can exhibit an equal what variances for many reasons. For example, income figures for low and high income groups in general show different variability. Okay, the variability of those in high income is different from the variability of those who are low income. Okay, data for small firms will not show as much variability as data for large firms whose economic activities are on a large scale. Okay. Smaller firms are unlikely to engage in extensive or competitive research and development since they may have the leverage, i.e. assets, liquidity, eco economies of scale, ETC, as they are also greater risk involved in these activities would expect variability to be more pronounced for large things. Is it clear? Straightforward. Thank you. That's stratification. Data treatment, number three. Data manipulation such as data aggregation, grouping techniques tend to produce marked heterogeneity. Use of indices, and choice or change of best year can cause heterogeneity. Heterosexism. Are we together? Data manipulation. We spoke about all these things. Just a repetition. But now applying to what? When the variance varies. Okay. Next, data collection procedures. Sampling processes such as class assembling can easily generate what? Unequal variances. Data collection procedures can also be a source. Administrative interference. Sometimes, or for some social political reasons, statistical data are interfered with so that some or types of groups or groups of figures are changed so as to make them appear larger or smaller than they, than what they really are. In addition, statistical acts and their enforcement can result in marked differences in data, especially in data collection during different periods. I think that's the last one. So what are the five causes or sources? Uh-huh. 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 Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Wonderful. I should play for you. Now, impact of heterosexism on estimation and inferences. Okay. We have spoken already about the variance there when we're dealing with what? Autocorrelation. 
The formula is still the same as the one that I gave you for the auto fault relation. Are you getting it? And can you see it? That the formula is still the same, which implies that bias variance estimation and hence general lack of what accuracy in all subsequent inference, in particular heterostatisticity, implies that number one, model coefficients will be inaccurate. Model coefficients will be what? Inaccurate. Number two, error variance in sigma squared is underestimated by ordinary least square. Number three, the estimated model has low predictive power. Okay. Now, okay. Heterostatistics can take on various forms. Typical or standard heterostatistics take the form that form the way by the variances are just diagonal, okay, of individual uh, groups. Do you get it? Sigma one squared, sigma two squared, but we don't have the correlations among different groups. That's why those ones are zeros. Can you see it? We just have the diagonal for one group another group, another group, up to group N or group G. Is it clear? Okay. But sometimes, this is just a, an example of one of the forms. But some forms, they can actually have correlations among different groups. Now, This is the main section. Testing, estimation and testing for heterostatistics. Estimation and testing for heterostatistics. Okay. Show examples there. This one just testing. All right. So now, what I'm going to do, uh, let me go and open. Or let me take you through, then remind me, there's one thing that is not here that you have to know. So before we close, just say, say tell us about different variances. Okay. Then I'll take you to a worksheet. Okay. Remind me that it's important. So now, as I give you these definitions, please take note of how the things are defined because it's going to help you when it comes to working examples. Are we together? Uh -huh. And I think I should also give you an assignment as to be part of the first to the second assignment. So second assignment, we have this one or this one will be third assignment, which will be submitted a day after tomorrow. <laughs> What do you think? Yes. You have come to learn. Now, so now, take note as I define this. Hello? Hello? For me, it's very simple because I will explain almost everything. Do you get it? But when you go and do your assignments, it's very easy. And people get 100%, 100%, 100%. Do you get it? Uh -huh. So, as indicated above, in order to be able to estimate accurately parameters of a model in the presence of what? Heterosedasticity. It is necessary to make some simplifying but attainable assumptions. Okay. So, suppose that it is possible to identify groups. Now, we are identifying what? Groups, which we denote by capital G. So, we have G1 group one, G2, group two, up to GM, okay? Such that error variances are homogeneous, i.e. equal within groups, but possibly different from group to group. Okay, let NG, G is equals to one up to M. Let NG, G is equals to one up to M. So how many groups do we have here? How many groups? M. I don't know why we used M instead of G. It was supposed to be up to GG. But we used M. So, however, let's take it as it is. 
Okay. So we have ng, g is equal to one up to m. B, the number of observation in the ith group. Again, it has changed. So it was supposed to be ni. And is it? But however, don't worry. It will become clear. Okay. So it will be N1, number of observations in what group one. N2, number of observations in what group two. Then NM, number of observations in what group M. Or we can just change instead of Ith group, it will be what Gth group because we use NG. Uh, is it clear? Is it clear? Okay. So now, first test that we are going to you to perform. First test that we are going to perform. There are two tests that we're going to use here. The first one is called the Goldfeld quant test. There are many tests. People have come up with different tests. I can easily come up with my own tests and publish it. Then it will be called what? Lawrence test. <laughs> Lawrence test. Goldfeld, Gold, Goldfeld quant test. It's a test that was derived by what? Goldfeld and what? Quant. These are names of people. <clears throat> Okay, so now let's, let me take you through the Goldfield quant tests. Are you there? Are you ready? You are ready? Okay. Testing for grouped and increasing, i.e. ordered heterosexual disease. That's what we use the test for. Testing for what? Grouped or increasing variances when the variances are increasing we can use this test the test for heterosexual discussed here assume that the seventh term error term are number one what are the assumptions what's the first assumption number two so those are the two assumptions so i can say give the two assumptions of what goldfeld quant test can't you do that what are the assumptions Number two, now the hypothesis to be tested is, hypothesis to be tested is H naught, that the variance is out equal from group to group. Sigma one squared is equal to sigma two squared up to sigma M squared, all the variance is out equal. Number two, oh, versus H one, sigma one squared is less equal to sigma two squared is less equal to up to sigma m squared we are saying that the variances are what increasing from one group to another group to another group up to the last group that's why we said we are testing for what increasing variances is it clear the test applies to a situation where the variances is a function of a and exogenous i.e explanatory variable okay the variance is a function of what explanatory variable the procedure is as follows. That's the procedure. And we'll do an example. Okay. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, don't sleep. <laughs> okay. So let's take a look at the steps. Number one, order the data with the magnitude of the exponential variable. Okay, so we have y, we have what? X. So you order your data according to what? To X. Are you getting it? From the smallest up to the largest. Okay. Number two, omit, say, C central or middle values. The value of C is usually chosen so that about 10% or at most 25% of the observations are omitted. Okay, about 10 to 25% are omitted. 
perform two regression of ordinary least square to the first and to the last n minus c over two observations. Then let SSE1 and SSE2 denote the residual sum of squares for the first and second regression, regressions respectively. Let also SSE max is equal to maximum of what? SSE1 and SSE2. And SSE minimum is equal to minimum of what? SSE1 and SSE2. The test statistic which is given by, which is given by FF, SF is equal to SSE max divided by N minus C minus 2P over 2. Divided by SSE minimum, which is N minus C minus 2P over 2 which is the same as what SSE max over SSE minimum. Here's the assumption of equal variance. This one, the F, is the assumption of what? Equal variance. Once we have the assumption of equal variance, that means it follows an F distribution with N minus C minus 2, 2 P over two, comma, N minus C minus 2 P over two degrees of freedom, where P is the number of model parameters. So these are the four steps. Don't worry, we are going to consider an example and it will become clear. Okay. The following data show expenditure data. We have household consumption income. Okay. Then we have income group. Okay, my friends. Test for heterosexual in the linear model. That simple linear model, y is equal to beta naught plus beta one x plus u. Using code for quant tests with c is equal to two. With c is equal to two. We are given c already. Okay, so we had said that c must be between what? 10% and 25%, but here C is what given. Okay, so the first thing that you have to do is to order your data according to what? To income, which is our X. Are we together? Order our data according to income, which is our X. And we are just concerned with what? Y and X. So what will be the first value? Huh? One. One. And what is the corresponding value of one? Next. Corresponding. Huh? Press this again. Next. Corresponding value. Next. Oh. Uh -huh. Next. Corresponding. Next. Corresponding. Uh, Next. Uh, 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 Corresponding. Uh, uh, Corresponding. Uh, huh? What? Thirteen. One three. Next. Corresponding. Next. Corresponding. Eight. Eight. Next. Tabela. Okay. So how many are these? Twelve. Okay, they are twelve. So our C is two. Okay, our C is what? Two. So 12 minus two, what do we get? 10. 10, Ten divided by two. Five. So we have the first five. One, two, three, four, five. That's the first set. Are we together? That's the first set. 
Then our C is two. One, two. The next set is what? Five. One, two, three, four, five. So now we are not concerned about these two because you said what omit. Are we together? So the next thing, what we have to do is to perform a regression line of this for the first set, perform a regression line. So y1 is equal to beta naught plus beta one x one t plus L t m. Find beta naught and beta one. All together, and also find SSE one. That's what we want. Is it clear? Yeah. Same applies for this group here. You want to find what y two is equal to beta root plus beta one x two t plus u two t. Then find SSE. That's what you have to do. Is it clear? Now, after finding this, find now maximum of SSE one, SSE two. Find also minimum SSE one, SSE. Then find your F, which is SSE one over max over SSE minimum. Then find your F. F we said is what N minus C. Is it minus C? Yes. Minus what? Two P. This one's divided by two, comma. N minus C minus 2P over T and R. That's your critical value. So you have to put your H naught, H1, then perform this, find this, then compare with this. Then you know whether to say it or accept H naught. Okay. So now let's have a look whether I've calculated all these things. There's no answer there. Now, next question, next procedure, but you have followed this. You can finish off the example. Yes, my friends. In the cell of, uh, we said C is equal to two. And from the procedure, remove C. C is the number of objects that you have to remove from your order list. So we are given that C is equal to two. So we have to remove two. Uh -huh. So that we remain with first half, in again, it's the same number as the second half. So C must be in the middle somewhere. So that's why I had to count. I said, what is our N? N is what's 12. Then subtract two to make 10. But we want two sets, 10 divided by two. You get what? Five. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Then C is two. So we start from here. One, two, I. Do I do this? Then it remains one, two, three, four, five. The next set. Why is N, is odd? N is odd. You can put one of them in another or in the other. Hmm. Okay. All right. So it's easy. Gold field quant tests. I can assume that you can finish off. Yes. I'm sure you know how to find SSE and SS. Yeah, you know how to do that. You've done the regression. Now let's move on to, to the other one. Bartlett test. 
part the tests. So we are going to consider those two tests, code fraud quant tests and part the tests. Can I have your attention? Otherwise, no sort of food. Yes, quiet, my dear. If you're not given, see, you choose a value between 10% and 25%. Yes. Where did you sleep? <laughs> you're meditating. I, I like the way you meditate. <laughs> what is Oh. Okay. All right. I, I mentioned that there are many tests, but we are going to consider only two Gold Ford Quant tests and Bartlett tests. So, this is Bartlett test. Okay. Yeah. If you use R, you use uh, Python and other packages, they can give you several tests. You can also Google and also try and perform uh, these tests. Okay. But we'll focus on these two for the purpose of the exam. I can easily give you all, but uh, it won't help you much. But if I give you a push, you can continue. Is it fair? Yeah. Another test for grouped data, for grouped heterostasticity, but less frequently used in econometrics is Bartlett's test. The testing procedure is as follows. Number one, the hypothesis. H naught sigma one squared is equal to sigma two squared is equal to up to sigma g squared. Okay. I think H1, H alternative is what? H1 sigma one or sigma i squared is not equal to sigma j squared for any i not equal to j. The test statistic is Q. That's the test statistic. Q is equal to, listen, please. Listen, listen, listen. Pay attention. Q, that's the test statistic. T, Q is equal to lambda over C. So now let's define our lambda. Let's define our C. This, this is simple, just lambda over Q, over C. But we have to define what C is, what lambda is. Okay. So we'll start off with C. C is equal to one plus one over three M minus one. Okay, M is the number of what? M is the number of what? Groups. M is the number of groups. If we have three groups, that means M is three. If we have four groups, that means M is what? Four. Okay, so one over three M minus one. Then times summation for G is equal to one up to M. 1 over ng minus 1 minus 1 over for g summation of 4g is equal to 1 up to m ng minus 1. Okay. Let's consider our example. The one that we just done. We are saying that c is equal to mention it 1 plus 1 over. Three what? Then by summation of what? One over n g minus for g is equal to one up to then uh -huh. G is equal to one up to then like that. So here from the previous example, this example here, we have income groups. Do you get it? So what is our aim? How many groups there? Are you listening? M is equal to three. So, so this is equal to one plus one over 
3. M is what? 3. 3 minus 1? By summation of 1 over n g minus 1. So when g is equal to 1, how many observations do we have on the first group? 4. Just 1 over 4. Plus, when n is g is equal to 2. 1 over? n g minus 1. Thank you. Then, when g is equal to 2, for the second group, 4 again. This is 1 over plus third group, 1 over 3. Then minus, is it clear? Minus 1 over summation of that, just what? 3 plus 3 plus 3. Is it clear? Yes. And then you simplify that. It's clear. Yes. Now, let's move on to the next. Lambda. So C is simple. Yes. NG. It's N1. Is the number of observations in group one and two number of observations in group two. So if you go back to this example here, we have income group, income group one. How many observations are there? Let's account. Group one. This is group one here. Income group. We have one, 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 one. That's the group one. It's clear now. Then we have we have lambda. Lambda is given by listen please. Lambda is given by summation for g is equal to one up to m of n g minus one ln of what s squared minus summation for g is equal to one up to m n g minus one ln of s g squared. Then SG squared is equal to one minus N G minus one. Then summation of that. Y by G is equal to that. Then S squared. S squared is also given by that. So what you have to do, what I normally do, because the formula looks complicated, but it's very simple. It looks what? But it's what? It looks complicated, but it's very simple. So what you have to do, my friends, you're on the phone now. So what you have to do is to just create a table, okay? So how many groups do you have there? Three groups. So we have one, 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 two, and one, three. Because what are the values for Y1? Huh? It's what? 22? 20? I got 22. Then? Then? For Y2? Then? 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 26 here. Don't beat me. Then? I get 26. Y3. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. 
So now let's start with NG. NG. What's NG here? Yeah. It's four, four, four. Okay. Then we have SG squared. SG squared is just the simple values of this, which you can use your calculator to find. Can you quickly do that? I'm going to for this, I'm waiting for this, I'm waiting for that. Can you quickly do? Such mode of your calculators, find SG squared. Two points. I want uh, four decimal places. Uh, six, six, seven. Okay. For Y2. For Y2 is nine. Y3? Three point six six six. Like this. Like that. Then, so you can see that. Can I have your attention, please? You can see that for our lambda there, we now have my MGs. Isn't that so? We have my. Ln of s squared at nine. Okay, but we also have ln of sg squared. So what we need to do now is to find what ln of what sg squared. What's the natural logarithm of those? Can you do that? Um, for y1 is, um, 0.9 uh-huh, LN of nine? Uh, 2.19. 2.19. 1 Then? 3.98. Okay, we now have LN of that. What we need now is what? S G squared. S squared now. Without say G. S squared. What is S squared now? S squared, as you can see from this formula here, last formula there, is just what? One minus what? Summation of NG minus NG minus one. All together. Then by summation of NG minus one, SG squared. So this is equal to one over summation of what? ng minus one my ng margin four 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 so it's just three plus three plus three what do you get nine then summation of or well, i can just remove the summation then by what it's okay by what ng minus one by sg squared so it's three by what? This value here. Then three by this value, three by this value. All together. So since three is common, we can take it outside the brackets. And add this and multiply by what? By three. Can you add this? Some you prepare me right. Three times 2.6667 plus three times nine plus three times what? 53.6667. What is the answer here? Uh, 21.7. 21. So, what is Ellen of S squared? Ellen of S squared. Three point zero eight. Okay. Now, tandem of values is it's not just a matter of what? Substituting them. 
So what is our lambda now? Lambda is equal to the first part. First part, which is this one here. So now so that you can finish off what's everything you know here. Huh? Can I assume that you can finish off? Yes. Because now you have everything. Just a minute of substituting into this now. And now get your Q. Is it clear? Yes. All right. Now. Now. These are the important parts of Bartlett's test. Under H naught, Q follows an approximate chi square distribution with M minus one degrees of freedom. Thus, H naught is rejected at alpha level significance if Q is greater than what? Chi squared M minus one at alpha. Are we together? That will be the end. So I think the values are calculated there. Everything is there. Can you see it? The solution. That's the end. So now, yes. Yes, let's see here. I cannot hear you. You have to speak louder. Uh -huh. With these formulas? No. <laughs> no formula will be provided for this course. Okay. So now let's go back. Maybe I can get an example from. Uh, Where's the exam? Here. Okay. Question, your attention please. Question B7. Question B7, is this is a pass exam paper. Question B7, let YT be equal to beta naught plus beta one xt plus ut. Be a random variable. Be a two random variable regression model. Suppose that error variance is proportional to xt squared. Error variance is proportional to xt squared, i.e. the expected value of ut squared is equal to sigma squared xt squared. Are we together? Determine an appropriate transformation of y, x, and u so that the model y star is equal to beta naught plus beta one x star plus ut is homo scedastic. Justify your answer. Okay. So what we do here, we want to find a value that we can divide through so that our variance at the end will end up being what? Homo scedastic. So given this model, yt is equal to beta naught plus beta one xt plus the error term ut. And we are also given that expected value of what? ut is equal to sigma squared xt squared. Is it clear? Mm -hmm. So now, if we divide through by xt squared, what happens? ut over xt. If we divide by xt, okay, just by the square of this other part here. 
okay? Which means u t over x t is supposed to You have to go how to do it. Can you erase this part, please? That's this last part. Yeah. What we want to do, what we want to do, I'm trying to find simple ways of explaining this. I know the answer already, and I know how to derive it, but I want to explain so that you also understand, okay? What we want to do, is to remain because this variance is not constant. Is that so? But we want to remain the constant variance, which is what? Sigma squared. So, what do we do to this? If we divide it by square root of this, or if we divide this by square root of this, this other part, which is not constant, we get a constant variance. Okay? So what you have to do, to, you have to transform this by divided by the square of this part, which is not constant. Okay? So transform this by divided by what? Square root of this. So we have what yt over what? What is it? Square root of this is equal to beta not divided by plus beta one xt over x c it cancels out then plus u t over so let me just put x t here over x t so that means we can take this part as our y t star then this one one over x t we have beta naught one over xt. This part is our xt star. It was, you know, we'll cancel out. Then this one, ut over xt is our ut star. So that's our new model for y t star is equal to beta naught. Star plus beta one plus two t star. Where y t star is given by that? X t star is given by that. Uh, u t star is given by that. Is it clear? Now he's saying that this model is homoscedastic. It's homoscedastic. Okay. Now they are saying justify your answer. Just find our answer now that this is almost scalastic. It's just a matter of saying expected value of what u t star is equal to expected value of what? What is u t star? u t over x t. All together. x t, we can take it outside the expected value. No, no, no. Forgive me. I'm not talking about the expected value. I'm talking about the variance. Because you're talking about what? Almost scedastic. So variance of ut star, which is equal to variance of what? Ut star is what? Ut over xt. Which is equal to, if we take xt outside the variance, what does it become? One over variance of ut. And what is variance of ut? <coughs> Can you see it? Which is equal to one over xt squared by sigma squared xt squared. So this cancels out. What remains? And sigma squared is not constant. It's constant. Very clear.
So whatever value of this part here you are given, just take the square of that and divide each component of the model by that part. Is it clear? Uh -huh. If you are given a constant by that, divided by the square root of this, the model divided by the square root of this, you end up with a constant balance. Yes. Uh -huh. it, it doesn't matter which, but what we have to do is just to make a transformation that y2 of xt is given by y star. Divide it. Then, pana pana one over this Gucci xt style. A beta one is you know what I got because do are kind of like your constant now. Do you get it? Then U T star, you don't normally calculate it. So perform a regression of this against that. Is it clear? So even if you, when you are given this is a X T star, X T squared, this is just X T. What do you do? Take square root of that. Divide through you divide by square root of xt, square root of xt, square root of xt. Okay. Whatever value or combination are given, just take the square root of that and divide it by that. Okay. Is it clear? Is everything all right? Is everything okay? Yes, my dear. Duty. Where is it? When you wrote in my mouth, what is it? Duty squared. It's supposed to be squared. Why? This is the same as what? Because variance of just ut is just zero. So you mean what? Variance of ut is just the same as what? The square value of ut squared. Thank you for pointing it out. Now, that's the first part, which I said to remind me. So I've already done it. Okay. Now, second part now, the following data shows the consumption and so forth, which is similar to what we have done. Now, questions. Perform both for one test when C is equal to three. Perform Bartlett tests classified by continents. 